guys, it's Sugar, and I'm here with Jeff tonight. Hello. And we're going to talk about My Hair Academia, which I'm super excited for because I never shut up about it. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I think the entire anime community doesn't want to shut up about it because... Which is great for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for all of us. I mean, it's... it's I find sometimes that it, it doesn't always hit right at the, at the time, like... Naruto was a bit of a of a short burn, I guess. It took a little while for it to take off, but then it yeah. did. Um, I feel like some of the best anime that we've had maybe didn't get the love and attention that it deserved when it first came out. Right. You know, I I don't know if Steins Gate ever has gotten as much love and attention from the general audience as it should. Steins well, Gate has gotten way more popularity now, but when it initially. Yeah came out obviously it was very like there wasn't as many fans obviously and it was very word of mouth and it was also that niche of being very scientific very uh having with time travel and a lot of people are scared of that concept of like oh god they're gonna screw it up or yeah. i just don't want to watch another one of these where it works so well on a scientific level. It works so well on time travel. It works well with characters. It works well on so many levels. So now I believe it does have the fandom it deserves, but early on, no. It was very, uh, very underrated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that it way. was, I felt that it was. And I mean, Full Metal Alchemist had love and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood has love and whatnot, but it feels like, you know, going to My Hero Academia, um, neither of us are necessarily actively purchasing um, Shonen Jump right now because we're, uh. we're so much into, into anime as opposed to manga. But it feels like this just took off like a rocket almost right from step one. It, My Hero Academia, uh, I, I feel like it was also something that was a bit of a slow burn because you had people that were very, can I say leery, about Shonens. Um... That we had Naruto, we had, uh, like you said, um, Full Metal Alchemist, we had One Piece, and suddenly there's a new kid on the block again, and you're like, well, I'm just set up for disappointment because it won't measure up. And so we had a lot of people I know personally, people I know really into anime that wouldn't watch it, just because it was the fact that it was a shown, and it's going to be like, it's going to do the same things as every other one, it's not going to have great character development, it's just going to be whatever. And um, I was, again, one of those people that was early on it. And I was really impressed. And mm -hmm. I got into the anime before the manga. Um, and that's what <laughs> gave <laughs> to the obsession of the manga. Where I've read all, well, up until this point, uh, I've read all of it. And it's just so great. <laughs> it is. It's exceptional. I mean, it's... It's very rare, and again, I, I don't know if you've publicly linked your MAL no, list or I not yet. No, I have to. I know we've um, talked about but it. But I think both of us have it rated as a 10 right now, which I neither almost of never us... never give anything a 10, yeah, I gonna so say, I was about to say, I don't know if I do, but it, it's rated pretty high. Like, because... I know I have it as a 10 on mine, and I feel like I don't throw out 10s willy-nilly. Yeah. Um, Movies, I will sometimes be a little bit more generous in terms of giving it a 10. Because, because it's a standalone. Yeah, it's like, if you give me an hour and a half of absolute Perfection. you know, wonder and majesty and whatnot. Right. Like, a lot of Ghibli films, regardless of how I personally rank them, they're all 10s. You know, there's a bunch of them that are 10s to me. Um, series, it's a little different. There are, there's an upper echelon, you know, there's your Cowboy Bebops of the world. There's Full Metal <laughs> Alchemist Brotherhood. There's Steins Gate. Um... Hunter Hunter might be getting there, though we're on the dub, so we haven't seen all of it. We're talking the 2011 release. That's what we're watching through yeah. right now. I started that's... the earlier version, but then I just went to the new one because yeah. everyone just kept telling me to switch over. So <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, so that's like an upper 9 to a 10. If if MAL would let me do a 9.5, I mean, I'd probably do that for Hunter Hunter right now. But I would say even after the first season of My Hero Academia, it would have been a 9.5 but I round up to 10. It's it's it, masterful. It had me thoroughly impressed, honestly, with the first season alone. Like, for an anime to get me to go to the manga is a big deal. Because I usually don't. I either mm -hmm. love the anime, and I love it, or I initially start with the manga and then creep into the anime to see what they did with it. Um, so doing this, it says a lot from my perspective, because 
uh, My Hero Academia, I feel like, did everything right the first season where it gave you just enough to want more. It let you know that it was willing to give you more and that it had more to offer and that the characters were going to be really well developed. And the last, like, three or four scenes were, um, they are in the, um, oh, I forget the name of it. Basically in the, um, the stadium. disaster stadium sort of thing that when they had their conflict and I thought that was so perfect because mm -hmm. we kind of just got this taste of what some of their abilities are. We had a taste of what real evil looks like. We get to see what the real stakes are. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And this, it's like he's saying, you're kids, but you have to be prepared. These are real people willing to hurt you. And I found that was so perfect because I find a lot of anime especially like to sugarcoat the fact that these people will kill you like <laughs> it's yeah. like you know there's not like you know there's always someone there to help you or whatever but in this case where it's just like these are real people and they will hurt you they don't care that you're kids because they are bad people like i yeah. thought that was such a good thing to point out because you get invested oh yeah i mean it's stakes are are super high all the time i yeah. mean it's they build their world really really well in the sense that you you never really feel like the hero. You never felt, at least um, in their world building, that the heroes were ever truly outmatched. Like because All Might essentially. Like I'm just gonna say right now, we're gonna have spoilers for the anime. If you're not caught up with, let's say the first arc of season two, we'll probably be be spoiling that. I don't think we're gonna go into spoilers about the manga past where the anime is at this point. I'm just going to say spoilers because I know if I get excited, I might get ahead of myself. <laughs> but because I know I've, I've, like I said, I've read way further than Jeff. But I know if he has a question that he really wants answered, I could answer it. And I mean, to be fair, I'm also, I think I'm at least, if we're talking about the anime, I'm at least a season to a season and a half ahead, I think, in terms of how far they would take their storytelling. You would be about two seasons ahead, I would Depends say. Depends on how how quick they, oh, their turnabout how much is. Extension, but, yeah. um, so I mean, I, I'm fairly far ahead as well. So I know where I know where things are going. Not yeah. as not as much as you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm up to issue like 110 or something like that. I think you're up issue like 140. Know. Is that around In the where 140s, they are? Yeah. Yeah. So you're definitely a little ahead. I found it. What you brought up there reminds me of another reason why I love it so much. It reminds me a lot of The Incredibles. Not necessarily the idea of what, what the Incredibles represented, which right. was that, you know, we, we need them back and whatnot. But it's kind of like the world that would have existed after the Incredibles movie. Like right. Where everybody now is a hero and ev everybody's got these superpowers. But like you said, and they say it in the Incredibles as well, they're villains. They will kill you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, we watch, we've grown up on TV shows where it's like, well, they'll show you mercy because, you know, you're, you're, you're a, you know, a 12 year old. Yeah. And to be fair, Stain, Stain or Slain? Stain. Stain. Stain did at one point say, he's like, I'm not in the business of killing children because he's an ideological villain, if you want to call it that, you know? But right. the other villains and most of the villains that they show definitely aren't like that. They're like, you're a hero. You stand in my way. I'm not going to allow you to get to a point where you're going to really honestly be in my way because some of the villains that have <laughs> that have shown up so far definitely none of the UA students would have a prayer against them. A lot of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where uh, and I mean, you know, they do a good job of explaining in uh, at the end of season one and at the start of season two that you know the students should be very happy with themselves having defended themselves, but they were like. These guys are like nothing villains. They're people who would be like doing purse snatches in the yeah, basically people the, that you grab out of alleys. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like, you know our true villains, like they would have murdered everybody if All Might didn't show up, if other heroes didn't show up, yeah. if the fact that uh, our favorite teacher wasn't there to fight <laughs> off like thirty of them at a time. Yeah, you know, it just it sets the stakes really high mm -hmm. right away. Yeah, and that's. That's something that a lot of a lot of shonen especially doesn't really do. We've all been conditioned through Dragon Ball and Dragon <laughs> Ball Z that it's like characters will die, and you know comics do it all the time too, which is why that's it's also interesting to kind of feel feel that is that we have had no indication that there's anybody who has a power that can bring people back to life. 
we do have a character who can like heal you, well, but it's but it's even said like if I do this too much, your body simply cannot recover anymore. So you're saying that okay, in the in so far as you've read, yes. there's nobody that you can see. Okay, so let's make that clear to the audience. Yes. That, in as the anime as... so in the anime so far, and as far as I've so read far. in the manga, there isn't anybody who can bring people back to life. There is Recovery Girl, I think that's what they call her in the mm -hmm. in the English, where you know, she can heal you, but it takes your own stamina. And she plain right. flat out tells Deku, like, I can't keep doing this, like you're it just it won't work. My quirk doesn't work that way. So they, they make the stakes really high right off the bat. And like I said, we were conditioned through Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z that like, oh, they'll just make up some MacGuffin that can bring people back to life. So death doesn't matter as much anymore. Sure, it was shocking that, oh, Goku died. But then you remember in Dragon Ball, like, he yeah, so did like, Krillin. Yeah. So did all these people who are, you know. <laughs> Yamcha. <laughs> yeah. Sounds disappointing. Sounds uh, disappointing. Yeah, Yamcha's died. I mean, they've all died. Uh, Talking about taking the stakes out of anything, Earth has exploded multiple times in Dragon Ball, in the Dragon Ball universe, and it's like, yeah, whatever. Like, here's some Dragon Balls, here's a MacGuffin that will bring you all back to life. So, I mean, obviously, from your reaction that you had, there seems to be somebody who's kind of come around to um, make us question the idea of maybe not reviving somebody from the dead, but definitely has a healing uh, factor that is... More advanced than Recovery Girls is, I guess, but... Um, like I said, spoilers. There is a character that can affect other people on a kind of like a, a cellular level mm. and can kind of disassemble and reassemble them. Um, so in that sense, not full, like, revitalization from death, but basically just kind of dealing with the human body in a very unnatural level. Um... And causing kind of pain and healing from that. So I guess my question on that would be okay. that we've seen a comic character have this ability before in Doctor Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Is and uh, as, like as we mentioned before, you know, he has this tendency, the creator, to create analogs of characters that are supposed to make us reflect on comic characters that exist already. Right. Thus, why um, somebody like all Might definitely is an analog of Superman. Mm -hmm. his, his abilities are reflective of, you know, the first incarnation of Superman. This character, are they supposed to be reflective mm -hmm. of somebody like Dr. Manhattan? Do they have a similar disposition or a similar sort of outlook? Anything like that? Um, well, I don't know a lot, a lot about Watchmen. I can say, like, this character... Um, how can I say it? I would say it's just in the sense that so far he's one of the strongest, um, one of the strongest quirks we've seen so far, especially being a villain. Yeah. Um, he's not, like, the head villain. Uh, I won't, I guess, I, I guess in a way I have to kind of explain myself. There is really the three main ones. There is the, uh, all for one, the head man, kind of the guy who's in charge of everybody. Uh, which you mm -hmm. read about. Um, and then we have uh, Shigaraki, which is the hand man, which causes decay. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, Overhaul, which is the m guy I'm talking about. And he's in charge of the precepts of uh, death. I believe the uh, group's name is, of course, I'm like, blah, right now. But he can disassemble and reassemble objects with physical contact. And I don't think it's so much that he is like someone like Dr. Manhattan, but in the sense that he is on another level of scary. And I think that's kind of feeding into that idea of kind of odd relation is almost like perfect blue, feeding into this fear of not even so much of just being touched and decaying because you can possibly heal from that, but in the sense that you can't do anything about it, in the sense that it's that terrifying that somebody can destroy you that easily. Because mm -hmm. um, I find all for one, obviously, it's a huge spoiler alert, is basically somebody who can take other people's quirks and use them for their own. And that's kind of the holy grail of quirks, so to speak, in the sense that it can be everything and anything, and it's terrifying. Um, but in the sense of just 
it's just another form of scary in my opinion it's kind of like when you have dark movies it's that mm -hmm. that fear of the unknown and like a lot of characters aren't aware of his ability so in the sense of it just being displayed he's the boogeyman kind of yeah and he wears like the plague mask you saw um well obviously during the plague the big beak and he yeah. wears those and it's kind of like this terrifying thing of not understanding his full abilities um yeah him as a as a character i guess then i i think it's safe to assume and again tiny bit of spoilers here but the villain world if you want to call it that was uh changed by by stain and his sort of viewpoint on things so is this character a reflection of stain and that you know he wants to see some sort of you know titanical shift in how hero work is done and people People need to prove that they, they should be heroic, or do we know anything about this character's motivations? I mean, we don't need to spoil everything. But I was about to say, we... I won't spoil everything, but in the way that... Uh, the best way I can explain it is Stain is more of an idea. Yeah. Uh, Stain is all about what a hero should and shouldn't be, and it's basically that's his whole spiel. And of course, that mentality is run through the media, and people run with that idea of what really is a hero, and people like Endeavor, who shouldn't be, you know, worshipped because he's kind of, he's not an All Might in the sense that he's in it for the people, he's in it for himself, and it just happens to be for the people. Um, whereas, um, totally just forgot your question. <laughs> oh, just if we know, like, right. why, why? Or, why overall <laughs> right. is the so, way, or why he's, why he's a villain, why so, he is like this. Overhaul is more so stain was an idea right so stain was the idea of what a hero should be and so forth and who qualified as a hero and if you didn't fit into that well you deserve to be killed where overhaul is i can almost say it sounds weird as he's a villain but he's more level-headed and straightforward and he was part of the original like yakuza so mm. he's part of that original kind of gang mentality and kind of diverging from that especially when people started to get quirks so he he has his own organization because there's the league of villains and then there's the precepts of i believe it's the uh, precepts of death and he's part of that and okay. so each one has their own kind of mentality and kind of drive and so overhaul is semi newer like we're just getting to know him the last few chapters and not even so much getting to know him as like we received intel that blank and you know we've gone into the, like this warehouse and blank you know yeah <laughs> so it's kind of from the Yakuza mentality, but then also being different in the sense that he takes in people that, um, which I think is a really great topic to get into with My Hero Academia, which also feeds into Overhaul, is the fact that not everyone is created equally. And, you know, everyone might have quirks. Well, I shouldn't say that. Not everyone has quirks, but the many who what, do... It's like 85% something I can't like remember that. the percent anymore, but basically, like, even though you have quirks, it doesn't mean you're awesome. It yeah. means that you just have a quirk. And so Overhaul takes in these people that feel like they're worthless and they have no purpose. And he uses them basically mm -hmm. as like, can I call them like um, Guinea pigs? A kamikazes in the sense that hmm. he puts them in a position that they will die for him because they gave them a purpose. Okay. So it makes it seem like their quirks don't mean anything because normally... With such insignificant quirks, some people wouldn't be appreciated or wouldn't be, like we saw in this season with the tournament, that some people would be more fit to be villains, even though they never saw fit to be a villain. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, Bakugo as a character, lots of lots of people, like when you read on, on message boards and whatnot, if they haven't gone ahead with the manga, a lot of them are like, Bakugo basically acts like a villain, obvious, like, and they're the conclusion they're coming to is like, well, obviously, you know, he's going to pull a Sasuke and become a villain and whatnot. But I mean, you know, I guess, well, we'll just say that they definitely don't pull. My Hero Academia does not make the same mistakes that I feel Naruto made. But, um, you know, it's definitely certain characters are made out to be like they might fit more into a villainous sort of role. Or that's their characterization. But that's one of the unique and awesome things about My Hero Academia. Whereas, again, using using uh, Naruto as a comparison, I didn't ever feel like beyond 
the uh, the Nation of Sound, which was made made up by Orochimaru. Right. None of the other nations were ever like they're not inherently evil. All of them are self interested. All of them are going to do whatever they feel best warrants their protection and their ascension. I mean, uh, the Hidden Leaf Village is the most powerful simply because they owned, you know, the Nine Tails. They owned the Nine Tails. You're not really fighting against that if you don't have your own, you know, um, Jinchuriki. There we go. I remember <laughs> the word. Um, but none of them were inherently made to seem evil. And I like that My Hero Academia is doing the same thing, where a character like Bakugo, who is uh, you know, incredibly hot-headed, comes across in a lot of ways like he would make a better quote-unquote villain. No, he, he's just a different... He's a person. He wants to be a hero, but he is still a person. Like, he's still himself. Todoroki, until recently you might have thought well he kind of comes across like he could have potentially been a villain right. you know he come and endeavor too you look at endeavor and a lot of the way that he talks and the way that he um makes his decision making i mean i guess it's safe to say if, if you want to get somewhat crass about it it's almost like he found a girl and kind of forced her to give him a child that would make the best Todoroki. potential yeah <laughs> made Todoroki who right. was his best he realized he's like I can't defeat All Might I can't be number one my lineage can become number one right. and it almost paints it as if he basically forced this woman to marry him forced her to have a child and then got rid of her the second he found a way to do so and that's where a lot of the the backstory with Todoroki comes from but it's like he he still does heroic things he is still a hero but he's a terrible person in a lot of ways well it's like Todoroki said in this last episode for people who would have just watched this last Saturday is the fact that Todoroki obviously unless all these things that had happened with uh, Deku he wouldn't have realized that he needed to apprentice under his dad because he, he said it. He's like, he's not a good person, but I need to know what made him number two. Obviously, there's legitimacy mm -hmm. to what he does, and he's good at it, even though he's a terrible person, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, speaking of, like, uh, um, people with quirks that could have been villains, where I think they make a good point of that, and you see it specifically in the tournament, is Hitoshi, or Hitashi. Um, we see he has mind control powers, and everyone's like, oh, man, that would be great as a villain. And... You see, like, people are put in that situation of, well, I had no intention of being a villain. I want to do something good. But yet, the quirk makes it so that it's it seems more appealing to be a villain, or that's what people, like, label you as. Yeah, it's inherently... The idea of taking somebody's, essentially, their free will and turning it against them, right. that isn't, in our society, that seems like an inherently sort of evil thing to do. Right. And that's especially true... With North American ideology, which I have a degree in political studies, I could get talking about all that sort of stuff. But suffice to say mm -hmm. that we in North America, especially the United States, values freedom beyond anything else. So the idea of somebody having a quirk which literally removes your freedom, it seems inherently bad. But at the same point, you know, and I maybe it will divulge on this further... When we look at the Jedi in the Star Wars, mm -hmm. and they can use mind control, they use mind control to make people make better decisions. Right. And no, nobody is really bad at an eyelash about that. They're just like, oh well, but they're Jedi. They're, they, you know, they're they're like monks essentially. So it's okay if they use a mind trick <laughs> to uh, to change somebody's mind because they're doing it for the better. And see, in the superhero genre, it's not that. And kind that's of the thing. It's right. that perception like overhaul, like. As soon as it's something that you have no free will over, you're, it's something you don't understand, it's terrifying. And that's right way it gets put into the villain category. It's like I was saying, Overhaul has taken that kind of niche thing where obviously he's part of the organized crime because he's part of the Yakuza, but then he decides to start taking in these people that seem to have no place. And he starts kind of counting on the fact that like, really he decides... It splits off largely because people like All Might start cracking down 
And then huge spoiler alert, so if you don't want to hear it, don't keep going. Maybe we'll just put like spoiler <laughs> on the spoiler. video when, yeah. there, when there are big manga spoilers. But All Might loses his power. And so people like Overhaul start seeing, well, if number one is gone, we can start coming back into the light again and start causing havoc. And whereas before, everyone had to start going into hiding and kind of what they start getting into talking about, almost like if you, uh, I guess it's more of a Canadian reference, but uh, tunnels and about crimes, working underground and working through tunnels, and then them starting to resurface. Um, I find it's just an interesting kind of intermingle of actual history and mm -hmm. the fact that they're working in with the superheroes. So yeah. Overhaul is a really interesting character. Um, so far, and we still don't know a whole lot about him, which is still really cool. Yeah, because, I mean, you could go into the idea, like, when he was with the Yakuza, did he have this power? Was this power something that awoke in him later? Mm -hmm. Was it something that was, as we've seen, certain quirks can be passed out or taken from people? Like, mm -hmm. was this something that was simply given to him by somebody else? I don't know if these have been answered. I don't want the answer at this point. <laughs> like, uh, unless it's, if it's happened in the manga, I will eventually read that and I'll enjoy it there, but I don't <laughs> need the spoiler right now. But right. definitely this kind of character in the fact that, you know, he's a Yakuza member. So you obviously know that he's willing to, for whatever his reasons were, he was willing to be an organized crime I don't know if the Yakuza are a big thing now in in the world that uh, this takes place in. I don't know if the Yakuza are still a thing. I assume not. If he's made his own sort of group, the Yakuza. And yeah, other... it kind of talks about when organized crime was a thing. Obviously, the Yakuza was a big deal, but when All Might and them came in, it kind of crushed most of. Yeah, because they're organized crime as a most label. of them are. Well, maybe not most of them. A lot of them were probably still humans at the time. They weren't. They didn't have quirks. I shouldn't use, like, X-Men type qualifiers <laughs> there. A lot of them probably were quirkless, or they didn't have a quirk that could ever have impacted what some of the heroes can do. I find it interesting, though, in this world that... And it's another thing that I kind of like, where I would argue most... I guess I can't say most. There's a nihilistic part of me that thinks that if most of the world suddenly started to get superpowers, most people would probably turn evil. <laughs> Whereas this world, that doesn't seem to be the case. Like, I a lot of people be have just balance. become... Yeah, and it makes me think, hey, you know what? Maybe the good in the world would supersede that evil and start to actually win. Because, like you said, All Might was, was winning it. All Might and the rest of the heroes were winning. At least right. in what we can see in Japan. Because... You said Overhaul as a character went underground. A lot of these criminals who were operating right in society were forced to kind of just go away and wait and hope and basically pray right. that a villain came along that could actually fight and destroy All Might. Right. So the idea that there is a character that good has prevailed for a little while over evil, like I like that. I like the more optimistic tone that they started off with. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to make the argument that the only reason they're doing so well is because of All Might and mm -hmm. All Might's predecessors. Which, I don't know if that's inherently true or not. The manga and the anime definitely seem to paint a picture that if All Might isn't there, lots of bad stuff is coming. Well, the thing is, with All Might being out of the picture, it shifts the hierarchy. You know, and uh, there are events that happen, which I won't get into as much as I can possibly do. <laughs> Basically, events happen where a lot of heroes decide to just take a break. Like, it just becomes too much. And it's kind of like a permanent vacation until said otherwise. Um, like, a lot of people find it very hard that All Might isn't number one anymore. And the fact that Endeavor has taken his place... And, of course, the two of them are not alike in power, in personality, in goals, in anything. And so having those shift in powers and realizing, it's almost like you have, like, a pirate ship and you have somebody new. And you have to decide whether you want to still be under this idea of who is kind of running things, if you support their mm -hmm. ideals, or if it's enough just to be fighting evil. Um, 
which I find is a really interesting idea. And All Might himself, um, like they get into the first season, it kind of glossed over it, and even in the anime, doesn't hugely get into the incident yet, but they kind of go over it where All Might had saved a ton of people all on his own. Like he's able to accomplish a lot just on his own, whereas a normal, even pro heroes, it could take many of them just to accomplish one goal. Yeah. And so for most villains, it was terrifying going up against All Might because it almost certainly meant failure. Where now it means possible success because you need more people there. You need, like, it goes into it a little bit about how the fact is it's not just in this area. It's a global thing about dealing with villains. It's a thing about dealing with the black market and dealing with, you know, um, weapons and so forth. And it's a larger kind of spectrum. Obviously, we haven't been introduced to everybody, but it's just that scope of understanding how big it is. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, definitely. I don't, it's, I guess, scaling back, because we, we're definitely talking about the future of the series. About the grandeur, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess. Um, as, as I've talked about before, you and my anime list and other friends tend to be what first get me into an anime. So right. definitely, <laughs> I, I would say that um, we got into it fairly quickly. I don't think the English dub was completed yet when we started watching. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was very I was early. I was very I was very impressed very early on by um, I feel most most people who have watched and enjoyed Naruto definitely felt that it hit its peak at the Chunin exams and even the Sasuke retrieval arc where all the characters were still relevant. Right. Um, I feel where the Dragon Ball universe started to really fall apart was when if you weren't a Saiyan, you were nothing. Right. And when it kind of started to discard all these characters that, regardless of what reason, you know, there are fans of them, and now they are, it's essentially pointless to be a fan of some of these characters, except for for comedic effect. Right. By the end of Dragon Ball, almost, it seemed like, you're not really a fan of Yamcha, <laughs> like, beyond, of Yamcha. beyond the fact that, like, oh, okay, he's a joke, and he's used to show that a villain is powerful. He is... He's a measuring bar. Right. Oh, that person beat Yamcha. They're obviously at least pretty good. Right. You know, um, later on after the Frieza arc, you're a fan of Krillin because Krillin is awesome, not because he has any chance of winning any sort of fight. Right. Even Piccolo after... A certain point. <laughs> after a certain point, Piccolo, it's like, you know, Piccolo might be one of the smartest, but he simply just do does not have the physical ability right. to keep up with Goku and Vegeta and Gohan and Boo and all these other, you know, <laughs> characters that are just due to lineage, due to just another well, it just MacGuffin. Kept, it just kept ramping and ramping and ramping. Yeah, the power creep. So. And obviously power creep is always going to be something that happens in mm -hmm. Shonen. You have to show that somebody is a significant threat. The nice thing I like about My Hero Academia is that y you can be a threat without necessarily just being like, I could punch a hole in the moon. Like, yeah. No, you, we have two villains who can basically kill you by touching you. Right. How does somebody like All Might defeat somebody who, uh, if they touch him, he is toast? All All Might, as powerful as he is, still has some fatal flaws. There, you could go into the fact he could probably move fast enough where he could connect with the villain before the villain can really touch him, etc., etc. But at least it still sets that up. The best thing about My Hero Academia so far is that all of the characters, all of them in, in UA right now, in Class A, are shown to be useful. They're shown to be to have some skill set which allows them to succeed mm -hmm. as a hero. Mm -hmm. you know, and Naruto did that for a little while, and then it pretty much discarded all characters who weren't a Jinchuriki who weren't part of Akatsuki. Right. You know, all those characters kind of got set aside except for uh, Shikamaru. Because right. Shikamaru is awesome. Because <laughs> Shikamaru. But here, um, we were talking about it briefly on, a, on another podcast where I don't know how uh, Midoriya, who is in our lens for seeing the show, and he's, you know, extremely powerful in his own right, legitimately was going to defeat somebody like Red Riot, who his whole thing is... I almost have an impenetrable defense. You just hit really hard, 
what are you going to do? And I know you told me later on that <laughs> there are, there were ways <laughs> Midoriya could win that, but Red Riot, who at, at least at this point in the anime has not been a major subject, he's still you can look at him and be like, holy crap! Like he is a legitimate. He's, he's a legitimate hero who would be very hard for Midoriya to stop. Who would be hard for, I guess, Todoroki would probably just melt him. But <laughs> it, it it's not a case so far where anybody has come across as useless, except for maybe the, what's his name? The guy who's got the sticky, the sticky balls uh, on his head. Mino uh, M Manita. Yeah, and... He is mostly, and I think the creator would say that, that he's basically a, a joke character at this point. Though, he obviously did something to warrant him being put in A-class. I don't know if they've touched on it much in the manga. I don't recall reading in particular what makes him really good. But somebody like Tsu, who, you know, maybe you don't see her combat prowess very much, mm -hmm. is still fantastic in search and rescue. Right. And that's which is something you find out point. more in the seasons to come. Like, you find out, which is something I really like about it, which you were pointing on, is the fact that even though some of them might not be the best, and I think you get a taste of it when they're getting internship, some heroes aren't the best at kicking ass. <laughs> some yeah. are meant to be tanks. Some are meant to be in advertisements. Some are meant to be in search and rescue. They just have these innate abilities that make them perfect for it. Uh, Sue happens to fit that in the sense that she's able to get into places. She's able to, you know, kind of stick on walls. She's able to camouflage. She's able to kind of get into those places where she's good at search and rescue. Mm -hmm. And we find that there's certain characters that just excel in certain aspects. And that's really wonderful to see because it's not like, well, if you can't fight, you're useless. It's yeah, that that's where I felt like Naruto got to that point right. where they... They started off really good where everybody was given missions that yeah. like, that reflected their abilities right. and it wasn't just about you need to have the power to destroy a mountain to be useful anymore. Right. And again, escalation happens. Right. That's why we had a Superman who could move the earth. Like that definitely wasn't the original <laughs> intention of the creators that we're going to create this being that can fire lasers that will blow up the moon and... We're going to use Green Lantern and have him literally pull the planet Earth. Like, yeah. there's always going to be escalation, but they've done a good job of keeping everybody relevant and keeping it all grounded mm -hmm. at this point, where somebody like Sue might actually be better at fighting some of these villains than, than Midoriya or Todoroki or Bakugo. Like, her skill set might just allow her the advantage over somebody else. Mm -hmm. And... The, the anime has done a really good job of showcasing that, even though our most recent arc before the Stain arc was all about, you know, we're going to have a tournament, showcase your abilities. Right. But even then, we had somebody who used the tournament simply to showcase her, her mental acuity and was like, yeah. I can make these things that I can screw over these heroes who have amazing powers. Right. That is essentially, yes, she does have a quirk that lets her see, like, five or ten kilometers away or something like that. Are you referring to May? I think so, yeah. She has the gadgets? Yes. Yeah, May. Yeah. yeah, she can... She. I love her, she's insane. <laughs> yeah, and she is, in a lot of ways, what she brings to the table is far more valuable than some of the people in the hero classes. The fact that... Well, she can give them gadgets and give them upgrades. Mm -hmm. She is that. She is going to be that person. It's said in the manga that basically she is the next in line to be the person to upgrade their outfits and to, their supplies. She is that talented and that kind of mm -hmm. ahead of the, her time. And the tournament arc, for somebody who is not gifted combat-wise, mm -hmm. the tournament arc still showcased her mm -hmm. as being a huge threat to the rest of them and how valuable she is, too. Right. And that's the thing I can say is my biggest peeve is as soon as the tournament arc came out, I'm not going to say who, but a bunch of people who talk about anime bitched about how the tournament arc is showing who's better than who and this individualistic kind of mentality. That is not what it was about. And that's specifically, even if they watched it closely, All Might said, this is what the world is. You have to learn to work with people and work against people. That's the world that we're in. And you basically have to learn to do these things to be successful. It doesn't matter if you want to do it for money or if you want to do it just to help people. You have to learn these things. 
and to basically, in a sense, well, you're, the whole hero industry is built on companies and groupings and kind of different uh, educational processes that you have to have people uh, on an individual level along with a team level to showcase their abilities. Because even the, they were joking with Deku, like for the first part, he didn't even have a chance to really showcase his abilities, even though he succeeded and he got first in the relay. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't even show off his ability. And so you have to have those individualistic exercises so that people can kind of see what you're able to do because yeah. it's hard to hire somebody on the fact, like, if it had just been on that first part where it's like, well, Deku did nothing. What can he do for our agency? We don't know. And that's why I love that it doesn't have to ramp up to, like, 100 because it gives you all these different facets to appreciate. But, like, they broke down in very good detail I guess it could have been even more detail for anybody who's super analytical like me, but I still loved it. It's the fact that they broke down like, hey, these people are into gadgets. They're insanely smart. Not on the hero list, but they could be. Yeah, there exactly. Are, then there's people who are heroes. Then we have the people who are like in advertising. People who like showcase these people's abilities and make them money and make them famous. And what they see in these people and how they market them. So everyone has a quality that's important in this whole process. Yeah, and I feel that they're doing a very good job, and that's that's why Stain becomes a really good villain, because he's basically saying, like, all of this stuff is superfluous to what a hero is supposed to be. You shouldn't need an agency. You shouldn't have to have heroes that are more about showcasing off themselves or showcasing off the, uh, you know, the agency really well or being in commercials or all this sort of stuff. He's like... A hero is a hero. They want to save somebody. That's all that they should ever be. Right. And this this world is stupid the way that it's built right now. So I love that sort of thing. And that Midoriya, in an odd way, is showcasing the fact that their mentality is incorrect, I think. How do you mean? Um, Mostly <clears throat> from... This, and this is just my interpretation mm -hmm. of Midoriya's character. Uh, Midoriya uh, is gifted this amazing ability. He is incredibly strong and whatnot. But his greatest weapon has always been his analytical mind. Right. And the fact that in a lot of cases, at the end of season one, mm -hmm. the only reason they live is in large part due to Midoriya finding a way for everybody to work together that makes sense. Or at well. least, like, they... They split apart everybody, <laughs> so on the whole, they couldn't work together, but Midoriya was making a plan of, like, this is how we could win in this situation if we all work together. Midoriya's always been about how if we do things together, despite the fact that he is a huge fan of All Might, right. and All Might has traditionally been, you know, the I can do it all alone, right. granted, when you look at the name of his quirk, that's the whole idea, is that, you know He's what? He's one for everyone. Yeah. I am working for everyone. Midoriya, I think, the mm -hmm. way they're going to plan this out is that they're going to show that it's not just the fact that he is going to be, you know, the hero for everyone. He's going to bring everyone together and make this a true team effort as opposed to, uh, you know, the whole ranking system and the whole, you know, All Might's number one and Endeavor's number two. I have the feeling, and I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but the end goal might be for Midoriya to just be like, he will be, you know, number one. He says it at the start right. of the series. Yeah. He's like... This is my story of how I, I became, became number, one. number one. I think it's going to be something where he says, yeah, I'm number one. We are number one. I'm number one. Todoroki is number one. Bakugo is number one. Sue is number one. Because the whole concept of heroes being inherently better or worse than each other is not as good as the idea of our agency is number one. We save billions of lives, assuming that it becomes a worldwide. As well, that's a very rosy colored way of looking at it. <laughs> but I, th I think that's that's where they're going to. I, I think Midoriya is going, they're going to see Midoriya. Uh, that's the only logical conclusion I can come to is that Midoriya is going to be very strong. He's right. going to, he's going to be the next All Might. He's probably going to become stronger than All Might ever was. Well, theoretically he would because every person it's handed down to, it compounds. Yes. But at the same level, the reason why All Might picked him in the first place beyond the fact that All Might was also quirkless, mm -hmm. is the fact that Midoriya has something else that I'm assuming none of the other all, none of the other people who inherited the quirk ever had, which was that 
he has this incredible, analytical, brilliant mind that can actually bring about how to make this all work together properly. And that's well, that's where I think it's going to end up going. I think, yes, he's analytical, but the main reason um, All Might gave him the power is basically, I shouldn't say basically, but a large part, in fact, because he is deep down a pure hero. He yeah. doesn't go for the celebrity. He doesn't want all this fame and riches. He just wants to be a hero. And I think that he sees that, and the fact that, like you said, a hero is somebody who moves before he thinks, and that's what Midoriya is. And the fact that he's super analytical helps, don't get me wrong. But I think that's the main thing, is he wanted to find somebody who was a genuine hero and had that that personality to persevere and to have that drive just to be a hero. Yeah, and I, I, could, be, I could be putting a little bit too much Naruto into this, <laughs> but, you know, uh, all shonen are influenced by the shonen before it. It's right. the reason why Naruto has a lot of elements that are similar to Dragon Ball Z. That's, you know... Things amalgamate and get yeah. better and better. Where... The, the greatest power that Naruto had was his ability to influence others and make them see his point of view. But we already saw that with Deku. We saw that specifically with Todoroki. Mm -hmm. We see that with other characters coming up. Obviously, you haven't yet. But yeah. he does it a lot, and he has and I, that charisma. And I, I think he is going to reform the hero, the, the hero business mm -hmm. and make them all about... It doesn't matter the individual who's number one mm -hmm. when we can just be the number one business of of being heroes. I, I That's where I feel it's going to go, which I kind of like that idea. <laughs> I like the idea of Midoriya influencing the entire society because that's the one thing I feel like... The, the main reason why All Might was so inspiring is just because, you know, he's a pure hero. In the end, when you look at everybody, every other hero... Like, number two is Endeavor, and he wasn't like that. There are a lot of other heroes, even now, in All Might is number one currently mm -hmm. in the anime, mm -hmm. who definitely reflect more of an Endeavor idea of being a hero. But I think that's why All Might was looked up to so much, is the fact that he had so many qualities that people loved. Whereas people, it's like, even conversely, Endeavor, he, All Might is able to smile. He's able to look at adversity with optimism. He's able to be himself. He's able to be fearless, even though he is fearful. Uh, I think yeah. that a lot of things that people look up to in the fact of just doing what's right. And I find that's a lot of the characters. Um, I love uh, a lot of personal character arcs where they talk about how they idolized uh, All Might and how that affected the way they grew up and so forth. And it'd be people that you wouldn't expect. Um, and it's very, like, eye-opening. And I find that All Might has a lot of charisma, and he has just everything you could think of in a hero that anyone would want to look up mm -hmm. to. Whereas Endeavor, I think it would be easy to say, oh, he's an asshole, because he is. Yeah. He's not a, a fan. He's not a man of the fans. He does not respect his fans as much. He is all about the numbers. He's not about, you know necessarily doing the right thing he is incredibly smart um would it i, I apologize for for breaking in mm. could you see him being an analog of somebody like a sherlock holmes where holmes holmes as a whole i mean and it depends on which interpretation you take <laughs> of him but he didn't seem to really genuinely care all that much about people he cared about um, the case he cared about the numbers he wanted to I mean, he wanted to he wanted to be the best. He wanted people to know that he was the best. Right. He didn't necessarily care about, you know, I don't know how to phrase it exactly. I mean, you, I you know the character saying. of Holmes yes, more. Yes, I know where him better he than cares, a lot of people. <laughs> he cares more about the case than he does about the people that he's right. helping with the case. Right. But where there's Endeavor a lot of... sort of feels like that. Um, I guess my thing with both of them, because there's huge differences between them, but that's just because I know it so well. <laughs> yeah, that's why <what laughs> I ask. Um, my thing, one of the problems with doing this comparison would be the fact that we don't know a whole lot about Endeavor. We know mm -hmm. kind of like the basics, what drives him, kind of his, a bit of his story, kind of how his operation works, uh, the people who work under him, so to speak. But looking at it at a very basic level, because we don't, like I said, know a lot about Endeavor, is just the fact that... Uh, Sherlock Holmes was genuinely highly intelligent. Like, he wouldn't 
need, like, Endeavor has other people working underneath him. He has an agency. He has people working for him. He has all these people kind of working together as an amalgamation, getting this information, you know, scoping out these places, figuring things out, hiring other agencies. Yeah, to, I mean, there's a reason why, if like, if we haven't seen it yet from uh, in the anime, Endeavor has never been wrong on a case. He's like, he I think, a hundred percent success. Percent, yeah, he is. Anything he's put his mind to, he's done. But I don't think that, even so far as like conversations we've seen him have, I don't think he's as intelligent as Sherlock Holmes. I find that Sherlock Holmes also had different personality uh, quirks <laughs> and just and kind of disorders. He also <laughs> had uh, <coughs> drug habits. He uh, it was obviously and also a fictional character. Uh, in Endeavor, obviously a fictional character as well. But in the sense that I find that he's just really great at what he does, and he's good at, um, can I say, uh, micromanaging. And mm. so using those people to the best of their abilities to serve his best ability. Has, and again, because you're, you're further in the manga, right. has, has Endeavor ever said, like, no to a case? Because he just felt like either it was below him, or he's like, I don't, I don't think that I could do this, so just no. I um, pass it on to someone else. Anything I can remember, it's never said he's turned anything down. Uh, I think it's said, like, very, like, maybe a sentence in passing where, you know, if All Might was doing it, sometimes he just wouldn't do it because All Might was there. Other than that, like, you've seen him work with All Might in the later uh, seasons um, because, obviously, during the time when All Might loses his power, he is there. Um, yeah, but... and, I mean, he shows up with... it. In the current arc, all the Nomu and everything show up, and right. he's just like... He's there kicking ass. Yeah, he's like, I, I'm going to be here. Like, that's Yeah, and that's, that's what the it is. thing. Um, but as far as I know, and as far as it's been told, like, it's been obviously a lot of chapters, but as far as I can remember, no, there's nothing he's turned down. It's just the fact that he sometimes wouldn't necessarily work with Endeavor, I mean, uh, with All Might, unless it needed to be done. He was not a fan of him. Yeah. So that's... That's where bringing it all back again to Midoriya. Mm -hmm. if, if 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 you want to follow standard, you know, shonen storytelling, the the student has to inevitably become better than the teacher. The only thing I could see him doing that All Might didn't do in his time in the Sun is um, change the entire heroing uh, society to reflect more of his own ideals he inspired a lot of people but i mean if you look at somebody like mountain girl she definitely comes across like she's a little self-involved is doing it for quote unquote the wrong reasons stain would probably kill her in a second if he had the chance because she doesn't reflect that sorry who uh mountain girl is a that mountain, lady. mountain lady sorry. <laughs> mountain, mountain girl mountain. mountain lady you know despite the fact that she's great at being a hero she comes across as being exceptionally self-serving well so i'm wondering because... if midoriya this is where it this is where he will succeed more than all might is that he's going to change the fundamental principles of being a hero and that that's going to go down to everybody even somebody like bakugo will be like yeah i strive to be more like him because he is the quintessential hero whereas bakugo definitely he's got a He's got a huge problem with Midoriya and always has. So him, it would be like when Vegeta admitted that Goku was better than him. Like, that's, I'm waiting for that moment to happen. And that's where I think the, the series is eventually going to go, personally speaking. Right. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know where, where, well, how we got into that. I just, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned that to you. So I just kind of wanted your opinion. It seems like you think that maybe that won't happen and... Um, the I heroing feel... business will remain the same as it always was, even with Midori at the top. I don't know. Um, how can I say it? Um, I don't think it'll be the rose-colored, like, everyone will be happy. 